Hello, everybody. Um, we're now going to be having a look at Playbook 2, um, which is all about uh, using picture boards, but it's absolutely all about language. It's all about um, understanding words. It's all about using words correctly. It's about understanding questions from easy questions to difficult questions. And I think language is so very key because um, if you look at the job market, somebody that speaks well, somebody that speaks clearly, somebody that knows how to tell somebody something is going to do much better in the job market. So um, although you, you're in ECD, you're working with a very young child, just know that through, uh, through working through these playboards, picture boards, um, you are laying such a strong foundation for, um, for school, for writing essays and things, but also for the workplace. So we need to have a long view, a long-term view of this. Okay, so um, these are the different picture boards that you're going to be given. Um, you can see it's, uh, it, it's a mixture of um, environments that the children will be used to and environments that the children won't be used to. So um, it's up to you, each educator, to, um, if it is an environment that the child isn't used to, you need to try and see um, how you can bring it to life uh, as much as possible for a child. For example, if they've never been to the beach, how will you bring it to life? If you did happen to have a TV screen, for example, you could try and show a video of the sea to give the children a better idea. But Whatever, whatever means you have, you must try and do that. So let's have a look. We've got an indoor ECD center, an urban taxi rank, an outdoor ECD center, a farm scene beach, um, an indoor at the home, um, an urban taxi rank. Now, um, why there are two taxi ranks is because, uh, 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 boards of taxi ranks is because one has got masks, the people are wearing masks, and in the other, they don't have masks. Hopefully, sometime in the future, we'll all be able to go around without masks. Um, and then we've got our indoor, uh, sorry, our outdoor home scene. And then again, our um, outdoor ECD, ECD center scene. And once again, with masks and without masks. So why have these resources been developed for young children? So first of all, we want children to understand and to use language. I've explained why that is so important. Um, we want to promote thinking skills because we are suggesting that you ask different types of questions. And each type of question is actually stimulating a different type of thinking skill when the child tries to answer that question. Um, and then also, of course, to help children understand different types of questions. To help children learn different ways of expressing themselves. So, for instance, um, sometimes they'll answer with a one word, but actually you want to move towards where they are using sentences. So uh, this also helps you to move slowly through and helping children to express themselves better. Um, and then uh, all of these skills obviously lead later to um, important reading comprehension. The more that you understand language, which we call verbal language or spoken language, the more you can understand that the more you will understand what you read. The other thing about it is that um, the bigger your vocabulary, the more you will understand of what you are reading. And then um, these skills are developed also for dealing with story sums in maths. So a story sum could be, for example, um, the child goes to the shop with 10 rand. Um, he buys an apple for two rand and a uh, watermelon for six rand, how much, how much money has he got left? So the child needs to understand each part of that story sum in order to be able to answer it. Okay, so um, how do you manage these question sessions? Now, just remember again, we call it sessions, we say manage question sessions, but it's still fun, you, you know, it's got to be fun. The children have to feel, oh, yay, I'm looking at this lovely picture. Let me, let me see what's in this picture. It's got to be fun. It's all in the way that you introduce it. So start with a picture board that is most familiar with the children and provide the, regular, the, uh, the relevant vocabulary and knowledge. Find out what the children already know about the situation on the picture board. That is terribly important. 
uh, before you wonder about what you want to, would like to teach them or would like to help them to learn, you need to find out what they already know. And they might surprise you about what they already know. So um, uh, in other words, get them to tell you something about the picture that you've given them. Um, they, will, they will be excited to see new pictures and they'll want to point and talk about what they see. Um, and this should be encouraged before you start asking them questions. And the, the question part is much more formal, where you are trying to find out what the child actually knows. Um, have some real objects nearby for younger children who can't recognize 2D objects yet. So the thing is that when children are learning um, about life, they see a real car, they see a real banana, they see a real chair. And they can't always move from the real car to a picture of a car. So a real car is three-dimensional. It's got a top, it's got a bottom, it's high, it's wide. That's it. But a two-dimensional, is it's only top and bottom. There's no depth to it. It's flat on a surface. The child may not realize that the picture of the car um, is the same thing as the car in real life. Um, so if you can, especially with young children, try and have some 3D uh, things around. If you were doing the home scene, for instance, you could have a bowl, you could have a banana, you could have a chair even. Um, and then if the child can't see it in the picture, you, you draw his attention to, this is the real chair. But look, here's the picture of a chair. Do you see? Can you show me the picture of a chair now? Let's touch the real chair. Let's touch the picture of the chair. Something like that to bring the child to understand the two-dimensional world, which is the world of books. Okay. Um, <clears throat> step two, follow the age-related strategy. So we've got, um, let's say the age is 12 to 18 months. Group size would be two to three children. Um, one child on either side of your lap with the picture boards held so that they can all see and um, engagement. So you point to familiar items, talk to them about them, and get the children to um, uh, uh, to engage with you around that. And you can you can use simple language in the beginning if you want to. Language the children will understand. For example, gogo, the gogo's cooking, something like that. Um, so let's play. Make sure that the children know the names of the real objects by asking one of them to give you an apple or to show you a banana. After making sure that they recognize those, hold up one of them and ask the real object that is, what is this? Can they name it? Banana, do they know the name of it as well? Then you put the picture board in front of them, for example, the home scene, and find out if the children can point to that apple or banana or bowl or chair that you've shown them in, in real life. Can they, do, can they find those things in the picture? If they can, then you know that they are moving to the dimension of, of, of well, the two-dimensional level. Okay, so if, you're, if they're unable to do it, you show them again the real object, and then you show them the picture, and you try and get the child to relate to the two. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. So managing question sessions, um, 18 months to three years. Again, you've got two to three children. Um, when you introduce the pictures, each child will have a picture board and you will also hold your board up. So in other words, even here, um, you can give the children their own picture boards. Um, and so you show them in the picture board that you're holding up to them, but also they can find those very things in the picture boards that they are holding. Um, so then it's older children, they could possibly share a board between two of them. Um, uh, but, you know, sometimes that's not going to happen because they're not mature enough to cope with another child. They want to show you. They don't want the other child to show you. So in that case, you rather let them each have their own one. Right, then aged three to four years. Again, that's three to four children. Um, they sit with their own picture board and the adult holds the boards facing the children. Again, you, you talk together about the picture board. They tell you what they see and you find out what they know already about that picture board. Now we're having a look here at managing question sessions and we see there again age four to five years. So then um, the group size now it could be more children, four to six children. Once again they've got a board which they either have them for themselves or they share it with each other. You look at the picture board and you talk together. In other words you want them again to be talking about what they know about the picture at their level. Um, to try and figure out and you'll you'll be aware of which children can talk a lot about it and which children don't talk as much 
um, you'll just be aware of this and it'll be uh, saved somewhere in your brain for later on. You've got to have the same board in your hand as they have. Um, and um, so that, and you have to hold it up so they can see, they'll be able to see what, what, you, what you are talking about. Okay, and you're going to use the vocabulary and ask the questions of all the levels, but focusing on level four type questions. So once again, the vocabulary is going to come, become more complicated. The questions are going to become more complicated and you're leading children up, this, up the scaffold, up the ladder um, to a, a more complex level. Uh, which, which is helping to develop those important skills. So some very tips, uh, good tips to know, take note of. Keep the sessions short. You know, children don't have a very long attention span. And in any case, they generally say we can only concentrate for 20 minutes or something like that. So don't have the sessions too long. Keep them interesting. And, and the way to keep it interesting very often is your tone of voice. If you're just going to talk about the picture like this, it becomes very, very boring. But if you bring some life and spark into it and make it interesting for them, that is what will keep their attention. Um, ensure that the sessions match the children's level of development. Because if you are using vocabulary or asking questions that are too complicated, it's going to break down their self-confidence. They're going to get bored and fidgety. They're going to be doing naughty things in front of you there. So keep it at their level of development and um, find a space there where there aren't going to be too many distractions. Now, um, I'd like to go through different types of questions with you because they, they are, some are more complicated than others. Some require only a pointing response. Some require a naming response. If you could familiarize yourselves very, very clearly with all of these types of questions, it's going to help you enormously with your other activities. So um, let's have a look at um, type one, simple closed ended. Closed ended means there's no other response. You have to have a right response. Is this a chair? Yes, there's no other response. Point to a book, there's no other response. They must point to the book. So. Um, it's, a it's a pointing response. It shows understanding or comprehension of a single word, a single vocabulary. Show me a boy. Where is the teacher? Point to a chair. So it's a closed ended question. There's no other alternative answers. It's one answer. And we see if the child understands that answer. That's type one. But type two, which is just on the other side of your page, you'll see it under talking questions. So perhaps I should just mention that. At the top of the left-hand column is comprehension questions. That means questions that tap into the child's ability to understand what you are saying. Talking questions means it's tapping into the child's ability to speak, to describe, to tell a story, those sorts of things. Okay, so type two then, a simple closed-ended question. So um, you would um, you would point to something and the child must tell you what it is. That's it. So um, it'll be a one word response. The child could also use a phrase. So for instance, you would say, what or who is this or that? And the child might, will, might point to a picture in the playboard and the child will say, or the picture board, and the child will say a teacher, a chair or whatever. Can you tell me where the blocks are? on the table. It requires just a short phrase. Um, um, what is this boy doing? Only a one word. He could say sitting, playing, reading, or just a one word. That's all. But you're getting the child to name one word. Okay. Then you come across to type three, which is yes or no closed ended questions. So um, it's more complex comprehension requiring a verbal response. For example, is this a hat? It's, it requires a greater thinking skill, but the answer could be shaking your head no, nodding your head yes. Okay, uh, can you build with blocks again? Uh, yes or no. Now, um, type four is a forced, uh, forced choice, closed ended questions. The child must choose the correct word and say it. So he needs to understand all the words in the question. For example, is this girl sitting or standing. So once again, it's only one word, but he's got to choose the right word for what you are. Type five, complex closed ended questions, which is where you want pointing. So it's slightly more complex, but the child doesn't have to say anything. He can point. Can you point to the girl with a bunny? So in other words, there are 
several girls there, but only one has got a bunny. So the child has to listen very carefully to your whole sentence to point to the right girl. Whereas it'd be much easier, point to a girl, no problem. Point to the girl with a bunny brings in a second feature, which is very, very important. Um, then six um, open-ended questions. These questions don't have a specific response. They encourage the use of sentences where the child's going to show you what he knows. Um, so tell me about the green table. So the green table might have blocks on it. The green table might be square or a rectangle. The green table might be in front of the teacher. The child is going to tell you something about the green table. But then to encourage sentence, you say, what else can you tell me about it? What do you like to make? Tell me a story about what the children are doing. Tell me everything about this picture. What else can you tell me? What do you like to use at your school? So these are all questions that are trying to get the children to use sentences. So if they only say one small thing, you say, tell me more. What else can you tell me uh, about it? To encourage them to elaborate on, on, on what they've said. Then um, type seven is also a closed ended question. It's under still comprehension um, and it's listen and guess. So now here, you're going to give the children a description of something and they've got to guess what it is. I'm thinking of something that you use to bring your things to school in. It's a long involved sentence with a simple answer. <clears throat> but the child has to listen to every single part of that question to get to the right answer. Okay, then we get to type eight under talking questions. They involve reasoning. So um, they involve reasoning, values, making inferences, and explaining. So explaining is terribly important. Have you ever come across somebody that cannot explain to you how to get from point A to point B? They just can't explain to you what to do. That's in adult life. So if we do this with children, they're going to get better. They will be good at it when they, when they become adults. Um, so you might say, why do you think the teacher is holding the girl's hand? Now, that's already a very complex question to understand, number one. But number two, now they've got to think, why is the teacher holding the girl's hand and come up with an answer? And then the, the, the last one under comprehension questions is um, complex closed-ended comprehension questions requiring a pointing. There might, there might be some a uh, discussion about the answer. For example, show me two bags that are the same. So that are the same is an important concept for children to know. Uh, but there might be a debate because uh, some children will think these two look alike and other children will think that those two look alike. Uh, and if it becomes a debate, it becomes more, it turns into talking. So I think we've finished there with all our questions. Then we've just got auditory analysis. Um, giving sound clues. Now, you can give the first sound um, and the children can guess the word, or you can break the word up into syllables and the children must guess. So it's like if we were playing I Spy, and you could in fact play I Spy, I'm thinking of something that starts with the T. What do you think that is? So it could be table, torch, teacher. Okay, so and remember, um, the, the, the sound you make, must, or the sound that you give them, is the sound as it is spoken, not the sound in the alphabet. So I'm thinking of something that starts with the T, is not helping children with auditory analysis or synthesis. You've got to say, I'm thinking of something that starts with the T. Okay, so we finished here with our types of questions. I bet you never knew there were so many questions to, uh, and ways of questioning. Uh, I'm hoping now that you'll start using them uh, in, in general life as well. Okay, so let's have a look now. We're going to see how, how, it, how it's presented for each and every um, scene, every in, uh, picture board that you've got. So the first one we're looking at is the indoor ECD center scene, indoor. So uh, first of all, and for, for every single picture board, you've got the same thing. You've got overview and vocabulary. The general vocabulary for, uh, for indoor ECD centers is on the right-hand side. So there you can see vocabulary under the picture. Um, each level uh, that follows includes the different concepts that should be introduced um, at the appropriate age. And then 
do remember that um, the experience of children is going to impact this. A, a child um, that um, is new to an ECD center got in there day one. He doesn't know the scene, the way a child that's been there for some time. A child that's never been to the beach, a child that's never been to a town and ridden in taxis, they will not have the same knowledge of those words as children that are experiencing those things frequently or have experienced them. Um, so for this reason, we start with the most familiar words at level one. That's what we try to do, the most and the most familiar words. And then you gradually introduce new words as we go up through the levels. Level one, uh, age, birth to 18 months, into indoor ECDC. Now remember, uh, children of birth to 18 months might not have been anywhere near an ECD center. So maybe this is one you might not use for them at all. But we've, we've put it in here in case you want to, but we're also going to go to all the other um, higher age, age levels as well. So what you can expect from children in these age groups. Um, children of this age will be learning to understand language, comprehension. Now, they'll understand words um, uh, and they won't be using very many words themselves. Um, you as the practitioner need to talk about the scene on the picture board, pointing out items that the child can start making connections between the words you use and the pictures on the board. So it's generally you're doing most of the talking, the children are learning about the vocabulary, seeing the picture. So vocabulary level one, the most familiar words, this will depend on the child's home environment community. Children of this age start to use pronouns such as mine and me, and a quantity, they might say all gone or one and maybe all, depending on if their parents uh, have ever spoken to them in that way. Types of questions to ask for level one. Focus, talking about talking while showing the children the picture board. So in other words, you're talking mainly while showing the child. But step one, familiarize the child with the pictures on the board by pointing at items and then naming them out loud for the child to hear. So you're talking to these little ones. Of, um, of a year old, 18 months old. Remember, children of um, uh, from about nine months start to actually enjoy looking at pictures. Uh, so remember, at this age, you're going to do most of the talking and the focus will not to be on answer or you ask questions, but to introduce new words and themes. That's the main thing. Okay, next one. So now we're looking at level two. That's 18 months to three years. And then Again, for each and every picture board, you'll be asked or you'll be told, what can you expect from children in this age group? And this is important. Um, it is a time of tremendous growth in language uh, development at this age. At 18 months, some children are only using single words. Um, by the time they get to three, they're mostly using sentences. So there's a tremendous spurt of development in this stage. Uh, let me see. Um, it is always important to remember that children understand more than they can express. Um, uh, younger children might not be able to recognize objects in pictures 2D, so the real objects 3D where possible will be helpful for them to make the connections. We did speak about that before. So, you know, we, we're expecting that kind of vocabulary from children 18 months to three years. And the type of questions to ask, um, you're still doing lots of talking about the picture boards using simple language. So this is still giving them vocabulary and, and language that they need. Okay. But what are the types of questions uh, that will help them uh, uh, with, 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 with reading? So for instance, simple closed ended questions. Where, again, where is the teacher? Simple closed ended uh, naming. Who is this or what is that? But now you can ask a slightly more complex question. Are the bags on the floor? Please use your judgment. A child of 18 months is not likely to be able to answer anything like, are the bags on the floor? But a child of more coming closer to three years will be able to do that. So examples of questions. In each uh, picture board, you are given these examples and they are relating specifically to the picture that you're looking at. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Okay, here we are, level three then, age three to four years. We're still doing um, indoor ECD center, but now, what can you expect from this from children in this age group? Children's vocabulary is increasing rapidly, and they understand and use much more complex sentences. 
they themselves are starting to well, ask lots of questions. And I'd just like to, um, I don't think we do elaborate it there, but what I'd like to elaborate on there is when children start asking questions, try to answer them as fully as you can. Not only does it develop their, uh, their um, uh, language, but it also develops their knowledge. So um, try and elaborate, try and give them a bit more information uh, in relation to the question that they are asking. Um, they can usually interpret 2D pictures well. Now understand what's happening in most of those pictures. Again, it depends. Do you remember, if a child only comes to your ECD center at the age of three, um, you may need with that child to go back to the earlier levels because he hasn't had any contact with pictures. Most families, many families don't have magazines in the home. <clears throat> Children are not used to looking at pictures. So if it's a newcomer in your class, even if he's three, even if he's four, think about going back to the lower levels. Um, okay. So, all right, so that's fine. So here again, you've got your, your vocabulary for level three. As you can see, it's more complex. Okay, um, so types of questions to widen the children's knowledge about the different situations, especially about situations that are unfamiliar, that are unfamiliar to them. This is done through lots of talking, asking and answering questions. So in other words, a lot of communication between teacher and children and also between children and children. Uh, for them to discuss these things. Types of questions, you're still busy with type one, which is where you want them to point to different vocabulary. Uh, uh, types one, two, three, in fact, all the basic questions where they must point, give you one word and all those things. Type four, voice, first choice. Is the teacher big or small? Uh, and then you might also say, well, okay, show me someone who's small. And then they can do that. Uh, forced complex closed-ended questions show me all the girls who are sitting so um the child has to understand that complex question all the girls who are sitting right um open-ended uh, questions encourage the child to talk what do you like to do at your school or of course what are all the children doing in this picture can you tell me what they are doing Tell me more about this picture. Okay, so here we go. I've, I've jumped the gun. Examples of questions. Tell me what is happening in the picture. What do you do in your class? How many tables are in this picture? Uh, do you like to sit on a chair or on the floor and why? Um, what things do we need when we paint? Um, who is holding a paintbrush? All these questions now are mixed up between uh, type one to type six see that for each and every picture board you are given loads and loads of examples of ideas um, and you have to and feel free and it would be great if you could add your own questions to these uh, questions. Uh, try and uh, the first time you do it make a note perhaps even of the questions that you ask of your own accord uh, because then you will uh, add them to this list. Okay next one. Right, again, we've got level four. We're still doing indoor ECD center. Level four is children uh, four to five years. And what can you expect from children in this age group? By the time they're five, they're going to be get re getting ready to go to grade R and to start formal schooling. Um, through the use of these picture board sessions, they will gain more advanced vocabulary, which is a good foundation for all aspects of the school curriculum. Um, they should be speaking in full sentences. Um, and they should be able to use descriptive language well. Um, the ability to tell and retell stories is also quite well developed. So then I don't really want to go through this in any great detail. Here you've got your vocabulary for level four. All right, then you've got um, types of questions to ask. Again, it's all the questions, but now you're also going to ask, show me something that starts with shh, show me something that starts with a and then also break the words up into their um, into their syllables. And then here you've got examples of questions. Show me the windows. What can we put in front of the windows to block out the light? Um, or, you know, all sorts of questions that you will ask and others that you come up, up with on your own. And um, these need just need to be read by you yourself quietly to think about what are the things that you could be asking. Okay, uh, we've got another one that we need to look at. So, um, Right, now we get, we're having a look at the next scene, which is beach scene, and we're not going into it in any detail at all. 
all that we want to see is that it is the same as the previous one and it gives us all the same uh, information but in relation to the beach scene rather than the indoor ECD classroom scene. So once again, it gives you an overview of what it is and the vocabulary then again. Okay, now here you can see it's exactly the same as the previous ones. Level one, birth to 18 months, beach, what you can expect from children, vocabulary for level one, the types of questions to ask with examples and, and then actual examples of level one. Let's have a look at the next one, level two. Same idea, 18 months to three years, what you can expect from children, uh, the vocabulary. And again, the vocabulary is specifically related to your beach scene. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, level three, again, beach scene, what you can expect from children in this age group, the vocabulary for level three, the types of questions you can ask for level three. Uh, just remember, if you don't remember what level, uh, what, what, what the question is, if it's a closed ended, go back to your uh, page in your playbook where um, it gives you types of questions and refresh your memory. But if I can just give you any advice, try and internalize the types of questions so that when you come to to seeing the, these things here in your playbook, you know what you're talking about. You know what they are talking about and you know what the question is going to be like. Okay, and then again, all your different types of questions at level at level four. And that's it. The next one will be another, another picture board, I think. And there you have it. And it goes through exactly the same. So I'm hoping that you will find this a fantastic resource for developing children's uh, language. Um, remember that... Um, uh, receptive language comes before expressive language so make sure the children understand the words and um, um, I think that if you work through these with your children you're going to end up with children that are really really good communicators thank you very much